And good morning everybody, Silas back today. It is a wet, miserable, cold day, but that's okay. We've got work to get done. I just bought an old truck, actually two old trucks, plus some other vehicles, so let's check those out real quick. Vehicle number one, the one I just unloaded, is a 1941 Chevrolet. Pretty rough truck. All the pieces that are missing right here, the grill and all that, is inside the vehicle. And the uh, pieces off the top of the headlights. The motor in this one here is supposed to run it looks nice and oily, so I bet it would run with a little bit of tinkering. Easiest way to tell a 1941 from a 1946 or 45 or 47 is this right here. 41 was the only year they had this pot metal ring around the back window. There's a few other differences as well, such as, well, actually, those are 46 right there. So those aren't the original light pieces. 41 on top of the headlights right here had a pot metal piece and it was actually a Pontiac piece that would go on top but in 45 they started using the uh, steel ones 45 had a painted grill though instead of chrome because it was a warrior truck 46 started using the chrome grills again but anyway lots of parts inside it the cab on this one's got a little bit of rust in it so I don't know if anybody would want this cab or not it's not terrible though it's kind of beat up on top a little bit but you know I don't know it depends if somebody wanted to build a rat rod this would work for that. Otherwise, you know, it can always cut it up for art. It does have a really nice passenger door, so I can sell that for sure. And then it's got lots of good dash parts in it. And uh, this panel here likes to rust out a lot. And this one's not that rusty, a little bit of rust. But usually these things are just completely rotted gone from rat nests. So that would sell, that pot metal piece always sells good. It's got a good seat, uh, seat frame core in it. So I don't know, somebody might buy the whole thing. They might not, I don't know. Doesn't matter to me, I'm happy to part it out, cut it up, whatever. Next up, we'll walk over here. This one over here is a 1946. This truck here is really rough. Actually, the cab, honestly, is probably a little bit nicer than the other cab, but the front clip is junk. But you can see here, it just has the rubber gasket on it. Yeah, look at inside this one, see how that's completely rotted out up there? That other one's not like that at all. So if a guy wanted to build this cab or build a cab, this would be the cab to build right here. The guy could pull that piece out of that other one over there and put in this one. But the doors are pretty good on it still. The, the ring that goes around the cab all the way around isn't rusted out. But as you can see, it is pretty mangled right here. It's got a good pair of headlights on it I can save. I can either use those for art later or I can just sell them. People need those every now and then. This in here looks like the bolt ripped out, but still it's workable. It's got a few other pieces, it's got a good emblem. This piece here is probably savable. This piece and this piece are two separate pieces. So a guy can probably reuse this on something different. Yeah, this door is pretty good on it. So really this cab here is pretty nice. So I will save this cab. Looks like it does have, well, that's just, never mind. That was just dirt. Oh, right there. Yeah, a little bit of bubble rust forming right here. There's a hole right there, but that's, that's nothing compared to what these cabs usually do. One dent, but overall, this is a very, well, that door's stuck. This is a very buildable cab here, so I think this one here is supposed to have a title as well. So for sure, I will save this cab, that cab over there. That's a little bit iffy on that one. Next up, we got this old van. It's really not that old of a van. What year is this thing even? Does it say? Oh, it's 91, so it's really not that old. Not even, not even an antique yet, but it's clear full of stuff. Don't have any clue what's in here. What's it say? God has the victory. Uh, I don't see anything that good up here in the front seat. Here's an old can. Well, it's not that old. It's got a barcode, but even barcode cans are starting to get old. When did they start barcodes? The 70s, 80s, something like that. So either way, that'll sell. But anyway, it's clear full of stuff. I have no clue what's back there. I, I kind of looked in there earlier through the window and I thought I saw some fishing poles, but the doors back there are all locked up and oh, it does have a key. I didn't think it did. I guess we can find out. I don't have time to clean it out right now, but maybe later today we'll have time for that. There's a lot of trash in here. Just by glancing in the windows, as you can see. Yeah, there we go. Bonus, I did not think it had keys. Cool, hey, here's an old wash tub, that'll be something. So I don't know if any of this stuff is worth anything or not. We'll kind of go through it. What I'll probably do is set it over by the trash can and then I'll set a truck bed beside it. So anything metal that's junk can go in the truck bed and anything trash can go in the trash can. But some of this stuff might be something like all of this stuff right here. 
I sold this type of stuff before. What is that, like a well? Yeah, it's an old well, the core piece. That's kind of neat. I don't know how much it's worth, but we can do a little bit of research and hard telling what else is in here. I'll probably have to work on this later though. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do so nobody else messes with it is go ahead and lock it back up. I'll throw the keys in the building. That way nobody can get in it and mess with it. Before we do anything else though, I wanna show you this car here. This car actually came from the same place as the van. This is a 1926 Essex. I think this is <laughs> the oldest car we've bought for scrap price in quite a while. There's not a whole lot left of it. I mean, it's got the basic body and the frame. The fenders are here. The front and rear fenders are all here. The hood's here. Uh, the running boards. Yeah, down there, there's the running boards. But there are no doors. There's no deck lid. And uh, there's no dash for it. So it's missing a lot of parts. It's got a little bit of rust, but not too bad for a 100-year-old car. They've done some modifications on the frame. They were gonna they were gonna swap a different rear end into it and all sorts of stuff, but it came with the table too. I forgot to mention that. Real nice, heavy metal table. I'm definitely gonna keep that for myself. The car I don't really want, I'll probably just resell it, do something with it. If somebody wanted to make a rat rod, this would be a good one for it. Finding doors is gonna be a challenge because uh, Essex parts aren't exactly common and then a deck lid is gonna be a challenge too. I know that's gonna drastically drop the price of this vehicle, but still, I mean, it's it's got a lot of a lot of stuff to work with here. Is that the windshield frame? Yeah, there's the windshield frame. There's no grill either, I forgot that. There might be some of the missing parts in the garage, but they didn't want to mess with looking for them. The garage is clear full of stuff. They said that maybe later they'll look for those, so you never know. People say that and they usually never look for the stuff, but I have had a couple times where, you know, six months later, the people will call and say, hey, I found all the missing parts of that vehicle you bought. But you never want to count on that, so. Uh, if I sell it, I'm just going to sell it just like it is, unless I get the stuff before it sells. But anyway, I do have two more vehicles coming in today. I have one vehicle going away today, so got a lot going on. Uh, let's go in here. I kind of have a game plan for what I want to get done today. Don't know if we'll be able to get it all done. It was supposed to be a little bit nicer today, uh, and that didn't happen, <laughs> so that's unfortunate. This truck here is the one that is going away. I'm doing some trading. The guy is bringing me a truck and taking this one away. So that will be gone here in a little bit. I've got this Chevette right here. You guys saw that in a previous video. I'm gonna see if the tires will hold air and uh, pick up some of the stuff laying around it. I thought about washing it and detailing it and all that good stuff, make it look a little bit more presentable, but I don't have time for all that. So what I'm gonna do is just air the tires up, go ahead and take some pictures, get it advertised for sale. Right now, this car is still pretty clean inside. With a little bit of time cleaning, it would present pretty good. If I take this car and stick it out back in the tree row, it's going to be full of rats by spring. So I want to go ahead and try to get this thing listed for sale, get it advertised, get it out of here before it gets tore up any worse than it already is. Then I've got a few other things I need to pick up, like that radiator and the snowmobile. I want to get it listed for sale. I have a front end off of an old truck I need to get palletized, so maybe we'll work on that today. But what I want to kind of do, if I'm able to do it, I don't know if we'll have time, is I want to come back in here and there's a bunch of just trash back here and odds and ends stuff. I wanna get all this cleaned up back here, make it look more presentable. And then what I wanna do is lay down sheets of tin or whatever I can find, lay them down in this area and then take all my front ends that I cut off and my cab backs and all my art type stuff and that way I can line it up in this area everywhere. And that way when people wanna buy stuff, I have it all in one location. Like I say, I was really hoping that the snow would be gone and it just never got as warm this week as what they were saying. So we may hold off on this and just focus on this other stuff today. But regardless of what we get into, let's get to work. Here it is, handy dandy air compressor. Let me see if I have a battery. That one, yeah, that one's fully charged. Okay. Doing this one-handed is a challenge. <laughs> Holding the camera with one hand and plugging in the battery. There's the front end that I need to put on a pallet. I need to get that done sometime. Sooner rather than later, I uh, hope these take care. We're about to find out. I really like this compressor. I had the smaller one of these and it worked okay, but then I ran over it one day and it got smashed. So I bought the great big one they sell and it works okay, but it goes through the battery so fast. You can only air up about two tires and then it's out of battery, even with the great big battery. So I bought this one instead and it seems to work really good.
Well, that was a whole lot of time for nothing. That tire went flat in the time I was over here trying to air this tire up. This tire won't take air at all. That tire back there has a tiny bit of air in it, but the valve stem's messed up and won't take any more air. So I guess it is like it is. It's a small enough car that it'll be easy enough to roll it on a trailer with flat tires anyway. So not a big deal. two-man job, but I'm one man, so we're going to make it happen. There we go. It's a little bit messed up on this corner here. A little bit rusty there, but I can work with that, do something with that. What I honestly would do is just kind of shave that corner off and then shave this corner off to match it. But anyway, it's on there. I just got to strap it down now. I'm trying to get set up with the company. They handle shipping and that sort of stuff. Whenever you palletize stuff like this, I'm told you want the pallet to be a little bit bigger than the item you're shipping. That way it doesn't get bumped. This is a little bit overkill, but I think it'll be all right. I do need to find a headlight to replace this. I told him I would do that. So I need to do that. And then he also wants the emblems. So I'm gonna grab those. I think I can just put the emblems down here. Maybe I'll get me some shrink wrap or something like that and wrap around it so it all stays in there good. And I have banding equipment, but it's scattered all over the place. I haven't gotten this place organized yet like I want to. So what I'm gonna do is just buy a set of cheap ratchet straps out at Harbor Freight. And I'll put two straps over the whole thing and then two straps just around the bumper to hold it in place down here. And with that, on to the next job.
here we go. This is a beauty here. I really like this one. This is a sharp truck. I just aired up the rear tires. I didn't know if they'd hold air or not, but they did hold air. So this one, the valve stem leaks a little bit. So I need to wheel it inside before they go flat. With them holding air now, I can pick up the front of it with the front axle and kind of pull it around and get it in there. Otherwise, I was going to have to pick it up, and I didn't want to bend the drive shaft. So this is a, a barn find. It's been in the barn for 30 years at least. I didn't find it in the barn. The guy I bought it from found it in the barn. So unfortunately, I don't have any actual in barn footage of this truck. 1954, four speed, or three, I don't remember if this is a four speed or a three speed. I can't remember now, but either way, pretty cool truck. It's got the radio delete in it, all the gauges. The inside of the cab's in pretty good condition. The seat is obviously needs recovered, but it's not a solid rat nest in here. It does have a little bit of rust up here in the quarter panels, I guess, or the kick panels. This one's not bad actually. Put that one over there. You can see down there at the bottom, it's got some rust in it. But that's really the most rust on this truck. It's just that one spot where the fender bolts the cab. Overall, this is a really, really nice truck. Even the wood is still in the bed. That's kind of crazy. I mean, it's got a little bit of rod in it. It would probably need replaced. A little bit of rust right there in the tailgate. But I mean, overall, for a 1954, this truck's in good shape. It's not all beat up. I mean, this fender is a little bit, but the bumpers are still straight is what I mean. They didn't back it into every pole in the county. The front bumper is still nice and straight. The splash pan, the grill, eh, typical 54. It's got a dent right on the very tip of it because <laughs> that sticks out pretty far. Let me see if I can get this hood open. I may have to put this camera down for a second. There's the engine. I would say that engine's probably been redone at some point in time because that's awful shiny blue for a 1954 uh looks like it's a 235 i'm guessing i can tell you in just a second what is that 5913 i'm pretty sure that's a 235 head still turns over good and usually these old six cylinders like this if they'll turn over they'll run so i bet with a little bit of tinker in a guy could get this truck running and driving spruce it up a little bit probably redo the seat just a little bit of tinkering this make a nice little patina truck or if a guy wanted to restore it this is the one to restore it's all here all original <laughs> this is not bolted in I actually sold him a truck a while back that had this in there and I wanted this back and I didn't have the tools to unbolt it that day so he unbolted it for me and brought it back yeah this is a really cool truck and I got to thinking about it uh, that truck there that 41 I think it was yeah the 41 that was in a barn and then the 26 Essex that was in a, a shed that was basically a small barn so I guess both of those are technically barn finds and then the guy that brought me the 41 Chevy is on his way right now with a 46 Chevy that he just drug out of a barn out in western Kansas so that's four barn finds in one day <laughs> that's pretty wild I wish I was the one dragging them out of the barn but I guess I've established the uh, reputation of somebody that doesn't mess around and I buy a lot of stuff, so I guess that's good that people bring me stuff all the time. He should be here any minute. I'm going to get him unloaded, and then I'm going to get something to eat. I am starving. I didn't bring my stuff with me to cook today. I just wasn't in the mood for it. Everything's you know, nasty and cold and wet outside, so I just didn't feel like doing it. But I've seen a couple pictures of the truck that's coming, and it looks pretty nice. So we will see it shortly. There we are, another 1941. This one had a title. Here's those pop metal lights I was talking about earlier that that other 41 should have had right here. This part's the same on them. This part's a Pontiac piece. Oh, one other thing I forgot to tell you guys, the difference between a uh, 41 and a 45 and up is the key. The key for uh, the passenger door on the 41 is in the handle 
whereas on the 45 and up is right here. Honestly, this cab here, this truck was parked in a barn, the story I got, it's got brand new tires on it. He said in 1987, he put new tires on it, and at the end of that season, it ran out of gas, and so he shoved it in the barn, and he never put gas in it, and never started it again. It sat in that barn all the way until now. And so, still has nice tires all the way around on it. He said, put some gas in it, a little bit of a tune-up, it would run again. It's real clean inside. No rust at all up here, I mean, rock solid, that's all good. The cab's kind of bowed in on top though, as you can see there. And then uh, the cab itself is kind of beat up back here, but it's not rusty. But the doors have some rust down at the bottom. So if a guy took the doors off of that 46 or that other 41 or whatever, did some sort of combination of swapping parts around, I think a guy could make a pretty nice truck out of this one. It does have some fender damage up here too, but overall, once again, I'm pretty happy with this truck. Plus it has a title already. Oh, it's got a newer engine in it. Is that a 235 or a 261? I can't tell. It's too greasy. I can't read the numbers. It'd be cool if it's a 261, but more than likely it's a 235. Go around to the other side and pop this side open. Man, that thing is greasy. Let me see if I got something in my pocket to scrape that off. There we go. A pair of pliers will work. It's got an 848 head on it, which means it's probably a 235. However, you can put an 848 head on a 261 block if you drill out the steam holes. So there's a chance that it's a 261, but uh, more than likely it's a 235, the whole thing is. I'm still happy with it either way. Pretty cool truck. So yeah, lots of stuff coming in. I don't know of anybody else coming out today. I bought a bunch of converters from a guy. I gotta take those by storage, get that done. I'll do that here in a little bit, but I'm gonna wheel that truck in before that back tire goes completely flat, get it set up out of the way, get me something to eat. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna move all these vehicles in, I think, get them out of the way, and then that van there, I'm gonna set it over by the dumpster and start working on cleaning it out and see what we can find in there. Go. for some reason my camera shut off in the process of trying to record shoving this in here but i thought you know what i want to try to somewhat preserve this uh <laughs> barn dust patina that's on here i thought maybe if i get time before the truck sells it would make a good one to take out and do a first wash on and if i really got rambunctious if i could have a sean or somebody come help me we could do a first wash and a will it run this would make a really cool one to do that on i think i don't normally like to do will it runs but if i was going to do it this would be the one to do it on that tire there is just about flat. There we go, my camera just shut off again and it gave a warning on the screen saying too cold. That's crazy because I've filmed in colder conditions than this before, so I don't know what's going on there. But at any rate, this truck will look good in here for now. I'll close the door back up on it. We'll get out there and get something else done. And welcome back. We are out here, it is Monday now. It is much warmer than it was. This is the first warm day of all January and it's the very end of January. <laughs> the sun came out yesterday for the first time pretty much all month, so that was nice. In fact, I'm about to shed this coat. It's too hot for even this. It's almost 60 degrees right now. But I am out here now. I just sold the Hummer engine. It's headed away. Uh, there's a guy here now. He's pulling that 2.8 liter out of my little Morris van that I had, which works out good because I didn't need the motor. I just wanted the frame and the body. So it works out really good. He needed a motor for his Jeep, actually. So that's going away. I've got a guy over that direction pulling some parts. Mr. Good Pliers is here pulling a few parts. And then I have a guy coming to pick up that 41 Chevy, the barn find that I just got. Funny part is, is it's actually the same guy that brought it to me. He's buying it back or his uncle is buying it. After he got home, his uncle called him and said, hey, I want to buy that truck. I didn't get as much out of it as I could have got out of it, just, but he does bring me a lot of trucks and I, I wanted to work with him. And it's always an awkward situation when the same person that brought you a vehicle wants to buy it back. But we worked it out, so he's on his way back to get that.
is headed out. Got pretty much the whole front clip minus the fenders, a few interior parts off the Ford, bump side Ford. I forget what year it was, but he is headed out. So now I think I got everybody taken care of. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next. It's too late to go back to the yard and crush cars. That's what I was doing this morning. So I guess we'll see if I can find something to do out here. All right, I know what we're gonna do. I got to thinking about it and I never did go through this van over here. The time got away from me last week. So that's what we're gonna do real quick. We'll just finish going through this thing. I don't know if I should start at the back or at the side. I haven't opened the side door yet. Let's see if it even opens. No, it doesn't even wanna unlatch. I know the back door unlocks. So we'll just go ahead and do it first. There we go. Stuff's falling out. Just trash. But yeah, we'll go ahead and start going through here, see what we can find. I'm thinking most of this is going to be trash. Where's the lever? There it is. And most of this is just going to be trash in here. I forgot to bring a truck bed up here for the scrap metal. I guess I can just throw the metal down there on the ground by that gas tank. Be a good enough spot for it. Stuff like this. Some of the stuff, technically, I could probably get away with throwing that in the car, but not gonna mess with it yeah I know there's a few good pieces like I showed you guys this piece that's probably worth something and of course stuff like this always sells so we'll save that let's see what happens here that's some tough glass right there I don't even know what a lot of this stuff is. Placemats, it looks like. Hard telling what all we're gonna find in here. Kind of a neat basket, I guess we'll save it. This basket, I guess, since I saved that other one, I'll save it too. Nothing grand yet. Beads, believe it or not, if there's a bunch of beads in here, these will sell. We had a mark of what, 50 cents? I'll save them for now. I'll probably wind up throwing them in the trash later. There's something wrapped up in this newspaper. What do we got here? Some glass. Swordfish. Two dollars. They were proud of those things. They're not broken. I don't know if they're worth anything or not. I guess we'll set them there. Most of this stuff, what I'll probably do is just throw it all together and sell it all to one person. People that are into this type of stuff. I'm not going to spend the time selling this stuff one small piece at a time. It ain't worth that much money. What's in this bag? Some thread. Sign. Piece of glass. See if this one will break. Nope. Okay, found this in there. I'm gonna throw this at that glass vase down there, picture whatever that is, and see if it breaks. Awesome, they both broke. That's what I wanted. I'm getting a small pile of stuff. A lot of this stuff I was looking at it again. I think I'm just gonna pitch most of it. These here will sell for about 25 bucks a piece. There's a church and this well. So I'll go ahead and sell those. That's worth my time. And stuff like that I'll save. Probably the baskets, but the rest of this. And then I found this here. I don't know. I would never save anything like that, but I know people collect things that I think are junk, and I junk things that people wish they could save. So I don't know if that's worth saving or not. Like down at the antique show in Texas, that might sell. I don't know. And I found some other stuff I thought was cool. Like these rooster mugs, but I looked them up online. You can buy a whole set for like 20 bucks free shipping. So, uh. We are making progress in here. There's a whole bunch of this stuff. It's, it's all through here. That might be something. It's a garden border. I've just been throwing it all down here in a pile. Put it all in with the scrap area, you know, and then uh, I'll ask Sean if he's interested in taking it to Texas. If he thinks it'll sell down there, we'll send it down there. If not, I can throw it in the scrap later. Bunches of books in here and I'm not even going through them. They've all had water damage from condensation and small leaks and whatnot. So all this type of stuff goes right there. There's a whole bunch of nails in here.
these here are like roofing nails so we'll save those this Pringles can is clear full of good nails check these things out they've actually got the little rubber washer and they've got the the ribs on them so that's a good good bunch of nails there I'll save those honestly that's probably more money than what that stuff's worth <laughs> because I'm using nails to repair a fence and that sort of stuff all the time. Uh, there's like this piece here. I'll definitely save these. Some sort of garden, something or other hangers. I'll definitely save those once I get to them. Uh, those nails, I don't think those are anything I'll ever use. So I'll put fix those. Yeah, all the rest of those nails are nothing I want. What are these? I might hang on to that bench there. You know what? I don't know what I would use them for, so I'm going to go ahead and pitch them. I know these are metal and I could throw them in the scrap, but I don't want to worry about them falling on the ground. So, and there they go. They're not worth that much money. What do we got? Oh, a croquet set. I haven't played pro uh, croquet in forever and a day. Believe it or not, sometimes this croquet stuff actually still sells. So yeah, I guess we'll hang on to that. This isn't a very old set. This might just be trash, honestly, because it's so new. It's not that new, but it's fairly new. What do they have it priced at? $4. <laughs> But I have sold vintage croquet stuff. A lot of times I'll sell them one ball at a time. And somebody that has an old set that they want to put back together, you know, they'll give 10, 15, 20 bucks for a ball in good condition. Uh, is it empty? I think it is. That'd be cool if it was empty still, but it is not. Oh well, good scrap metal. Here's a good shovel. Yeah, it's still a good shovel. The handle's not all rotted or nothing. It was covered up so the sun didn't make it. So you'll hang on to that. What in the world is this? Oh, more garden stuff. Just found these. Should I take these home to my wife for Valentine's Day? What do you think? You think she'll appreciate this? <laughs> I'm not that crazy, guys. Don't think I am. Here's a couple toolboxes. Anything good? Worn out pair of tin snips. Just miscellaneous odds and ends junk, it looks like. Oh, there's some Allen wrenches. We'll hang on to those. There's a few sockets in there, I guess, but they're all just oddball. Yeah, probably nothing good. I always have this idea that I'm going to save up a whole bunch of these and then I'll put together a set out of just miscellaneous scrap sockets. But you know, honestly, you always wind up missing a few that you have to go buy. And by the time you buy them, you're better off just buying a whole set. But what I do is I save all this type of stuff up and I throw them in boxes. And every now and then I just take them out to the auction and sell them. Anything good in this one? No, I don't see anything good at all in there. It's all just worn out stuff. There's a pair of pliers, I guess. You can always use pliers. I think what I'll do on the rest of this is this van is just going to be getting crushed so anything metal or metal related that i decide i don't want to keep i'm just going to leave in the van i'm just going to try to get the rest of this trash out of here mainly that foam and this cardboard and then everything else can just stay in here i thought about saving this thing for storage but it's got a leaky roof on it and it's just really rusty so i think i'm just going to go ahead and crush it big old chunk of brass right there throw that back there okay let's clear out enough space to get up in here a little bit it's trash i'll set it back there i don't know what's in here bunch of sewing stuff bunch more sewing stuff bunch more sewing stuff bunch more greenery that's metal Let's see here, what's in this? Anything good? Plumbing stuff. I'll throw that out there on the ground. Oh, I found those uh, drawer things right there. They're not in the greatest condition, but they still work. And I've got that office empty, so I figured I might use those for something in there for storage. What's this? Motorcycle helmet. A gold wing. I don't know if that's anything or not. I'll look it up. Empty. Just trash, trash, trash. Old baseball bat, probably just trash. 
junk golf clubs. But here's the main thing I wanted, is here's a vintage croquet set. That might be something there, so we'll go ahead and save that. Uh, beyond that, I think everything else in here is just trash, so looks like we didn't find that much good stuff. And honestly, even some of the good stuff that I saved down there, I'm probably gonna go ahead and pitch a bunch of that in the trash. Oh, one other thing I found, I forgot to show you guys. This is a pretty good find, probably the best find of the whole thing, is all these chains right here. There's three chains in there, and they're all good chains with hooks on both ends, so that's a good deal. And then also, I don't wanna open it up, I'm scared the thing will break, but there's a whole bunch of sockets and a ratchet and everything complete set. Oh, and there's these here too. That one there's kind of messed up, it's probably nothing, but this in here is kind of cool. So, really didn't find much in here that was really worth anything grand or spectacular, but it was fun to dig through there. This old tractor, <laughs> it finally met its fate, I guess. Kind of cool. It's got a neat grill and hood on it. I'll cut that stuff off later, but probably pull the carburetor off. Maybe this piece, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe the rear fenders are pretty nice still. So it's got some good pieces left on her, but when you come here, you don't usually leave. Oh, it's got a magneto on it as well. It's a little bit messed up on this side in the grill, but not, not terrible. It doesn't completely ruin it. Still has a radiator on it too, so yeah, we'll pull a few pieces off of it, I guess. But then after that, it's probably gonna go on down the road in one of those bundles of crushed cars over there. Lots of stuff happened in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed riding along with me. I know I enjoy taking the camera along with me, showing you guys what I'm up to. I've got a guy coming now to pick up some transmissions, so I'm gonna go out to my place and meet him out there, send a few pictures to some people. I will see you on the next one, whatever we get up to, I don't know yet. Maybe I'll do a treasure hunt next. I don't know. Maybe I'll we'll just kind of see how it goes. But with that, I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Remember to get out there, find yourself an adventure. See you on the next one.